Good morning, my dearest brothers and sisters in Christ. May you be feeling well today and be fully immersed in your God. May he be dwelling with you and walking with you. No matter your trials, your tribulations of the day, no matter your fears, put all of your trust in the Lord. He has told us from the beginning what the end will be and we can be confident in every word the Lord has said to you. And he has said everything you need in his word. And Jesus Christ is his word. Look for him, seek him, and ye shall find him. Don't be afraid. Step into his glory and be with him for eternity. Put your trust in the Lord. He is coming for you. Don't doubt it. Don't let any naysayer pull your hope from you. It is real. It is true and it is coming soon. But we have to still look at what's going on in our world, in our churches. We have to understand and help those that don't understand. We have to prepare the bride. It is so important. We are at the end of days. We don't have much time left here, but we have to let those that will be left behind know it is true, know what they are seeing and know why they are seeing it. And I, I would like to just point out to you that men in this world think they are wise. They think they have all the wisdom, all the science. It is all at their beck and call. They have the Professor Google. They have Dr. Google. They have all of this information, but they've never learned anything. Everything you need is in the Bible, even healing. Everything you need is in the Word of God. And people don't realise the power that they have when they have God in their life. When you rely on your own wisdom, your own intellect, you are this smart. But when you let God's knowledge, God's intellect lead you, you are unlimited. Because God is unlimited. You can't put him in a book, in a box. You can't do any of that. Even his words in the Bible. You may read a, a phrase one day and you will understand something. You read the same phrase another day when another situation has happened. Suddenly you understand something else. And this is what happens daily. And when I thought about wisdom, well, I didn't think about it. God placed it in me to think about it. He wanted you to think about this. Solomon was the wisest man. God has declared this. Solomon was the wisest man that ever was and ever will be. But Solomon made mistakes because Solomon did not do the one thing that God said, put your trust in me. This came to light the other day. I was listening to a preacher and he, he was speaking of Solomon the wise but he was calling Solomon the Wise a sex addict because Solomon had thousand wives and so many concubines and he was going into the dirty business of Christianity. I don't think he was a true Christian. He was a false teacher. But he was taking this line of thought and I'm thinking, ooh, that sounds very dirty, saying that about Solomon. But then I thought, Solomon did have all those wives, but 
This is an impossibility for a man to have wives. And Solomon was to told to us he is the wisest man alive, ever was, ever will be. So how is this wisdom? It's his own wisdom. He did not trust in the Lord. He relied on his own. He had prayed for wisdom. And God granted it to him in abundance. But he relied on his wisdom and not the Lord's word. He knew that one man, one woman, he had knowledge. Knowledge is different than wisdom. You can have a lot of knowledge and not know how to use it or to use it wrongly. But he had, and I'm not trying to disrespect um, Solomon. Solomon was God's person. He was of God. He was doing God's will. I'm speaking on one topic, the wisdom where he failed because he trusted in. And this is where our churches are failing. They have the wisdom of the book, the word of God. They have the knowledge of the word of God, but they are trusting in their own wisdom. The Bible says you have no communion with transgressors. You do not make alliance with the devil. You do not bring the devil into the house of God. All of these things we know, but the churches today are doing exactly what Solomon the wise did. Wise in their own conceit. Solomon's wives was an important thing to know. The first wife of Solomon that was recorded in the Bible Solomon made an affinity with Pharaoh by marriage. Affinity with someone is like a, a treaty. Solomon's kingdom was the most peaceful. He had no enemies because he made treaties. He had a token bride, a token wife. I mean, you hear that all the time, these... Um, politicians have a token bride they have a token um the footballers they all have this token bride that makes raises their status in society but in the old days that token was a real token something you would pass across when i was young the the local store made bread and you would get a token. You would buy so many tokens and that was your bread purchases. You could only buy bread with that token. You couldn't buy anything else with that token. You had this coin with a hole in the middle with the store name on it and it said bread token. And when you went to pay for your bread, you handed in a bread token and you got the bread back. This is what Solomon's first wife was. She was a token from Pharaoh to Solomon because they all realised that Solomon had been given wisdom from God. They all acknowledged that. He was powerful. He was under God's anointment and therefore he was someone to be feared. And he had an army against something that God said, no, rely on me. All of his attributes he used out of wisdom of himself, not of God. He didn't put his trust in God. God said, you put your trust in me. I will supply the armies. I will defend you. Don't put, when you become king, don't put horses, don't build up an army but no he built up his army he built up his horses he had many and people feared him they knew he was a god man but they also knew 
not God man, as people say Jesus is God man. I mean, a man of God. They knew he was anointed of God. They knew he had the power of God behind him if he called on it. But they also knew one other thing. He had an army to be feared. So they made these agreements, these treaties with him. They put a token to him to say, don't attack us. We will be your ally and you will have our daughter. The daughter of Pharaoh was given to Solomon to wife. But this didn't just happen with Solomon. This was all of the the tribes, the the kingdoms. And back then there were multiple kingdoms around them. They were small kingdoms. We today would call them chiefdoms. But they were kingdoms. And all of these kings or chiefs gave their daughters to Solomon as a token of a contract, as a token of a treaty of peace these were not wives in the sense that we think of a wife these were token wives and being a token now why was it called he was a he was in affinity that's the word I just had to remember that word in affinity when you're in affinity with someone you're sort of traveling along together but we're meant to be set apart we're supposed to be the example to the world but what did Solomon do to keep the peace Solomon did a wicked thing he had the bride the daughters of all of these kings and they all had their own gods for each region back then each kingdom had their own god. They were regional gods. They were the fallen angels who took over a region. That's why we had the prince of Tyre. We had um, each region had its own Osiris in Egypt. All of these had their own kingdoms, their own gods. Their own fallen angels had taken over the world. Satan, remember, offered Jesus, I will give you all of these kingdoms. He owned them because they were his minions. They were his fallen angel friends. He was the, the Lord of them. And Satan said, I'll throw them out of their kingdom. If you follow me, you can have it all as long as I get Jerusalem. You can have everything else, but I want this. He wanted the, he had it all. He wanted the only thing he didn't have at that time, which was Jerusalem. He didn't understand that God wasn't just a place, but God was in his people. That's another story, and you know it anyway. But... Solomon, by making all of these affinities with all of these kingdoms, he didn't want to offend his friends, his allies. He wasn't going to be the husband of all of these women. He couldn't. Can you imagine? When would they see him? And he's a human being. Now just think of the mathematics of pleasing over a thousand women in and they're just the legitimate wives and then the concubines that have been given to him imagine it would be a physical impossibility for any man to do that duty <laughs> and run run a kingdom be um fearful uh, have other people fearing him because he's so kingly and is running courts of all the nations, courts of all the people. He's the judge. He is working hard. He's not 
laying back on a on a bed somewhere being pampered while women are brought to him day in and day out. He would never have any sleep just in that issue. So he wasn't the husband as we see a husband. He wasn't a sex addict. He probably never went unto any of these women. He maybe had one or two women that he loved and was, was the husband to them. But think realistically, guys. We've got to keep our thinking caps on. Solomon had contracts. The wives were the seal to the contract. This is the... F and what did he do? He brought in all of their gods to appease every one of these women. He And therefore keep that contract flowing. He allowed every woman that had a different god to build a temple to their god within the kingdom of Jerusalem. So here is the fallen angels coming in by stealth and placing their markers in the land of Israel. Do you see how they they just came in, planted their own temples? Through this he didn't trust the Lord. He used his wisdom for peace. And this is what happened. It brought them in and that then drew away. Israelites to these religions because once you've got a temple there and something's going on here there's a few curious oh what's going on over there we'll go over there this is fun oh what's going on this is fun we're allowed to the king has brought these temples he built them he built for the queen the the princess from Egypt he built her a special one in the temple region of the temple of God, he made an identical copy for her, for her God. God shall not be mocked. Now this happened then and that pulled away so many Israelites from the true God. There were still those that stayed true to God, but there were a lot that were lured out into this. But it was, it was perpetrated by the wisest man on earth. We today have all of these churches, these people who think they are so wise. How will we get all of these people People, we're going to get a revival going. We're going to build up this church. We're going to get lots of money and we'll be as rich as Solomon with all of his treasures. And we will have these big crowds. But what did they do? They compromised. We want to be at peace with these people. We'll let them come in. We'll bring in their token we'll bring in this token until we are now saying we are all one and we are bowing down to the beliefs of the others instead of staying true to God this is where it has gone wrong but God will redeem the situation as he always has and he gave us the plan back in Kings the book of Kings and I wrote it down. Please excuse me because I don't want to get this wrong. It's the rapture is going to shake it all up. And listen to what he says. in. Look it up in 2 Kings. We're back in the Old Testament. 2 Kings, book 19, oh, chapter 19, verse 19. Listen to this. This is so beautiful. This I call the prayer of rapture. Now, therefore... O Lord God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. We have been telling them and telling them, Jesus is the only name given. 
Jesus will rapture his church. Jesus is the only way, the truth, the way, the life, the light. He is it. But our modern churches are saying, oh, there's many ways. There's this way. Yes, you are all children of God. He's going to come for all of you. But there's going to be a day where the truth is revealed and it's soon. The truth being revealed is that those that have put their faith and their trust and their love in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only name given, he is it. He is salvation. His name is Yeshua. Salvation. God's salvation is his name. And that is the only name, God's salvation, that is given that by which man may be saved. And he's coming and he is going to do kings, two kings, 1919. 19. He is going to come and take us away, those that believe. We are going to be taken away so that those that are left can see and believe. There is a God in heaven. It is true. He is the only one that came and did what he said he would do and he took his people out. Therefore, every word he said is true. Therefore, he is the only God and therefore, when they read the Bible or remember what they were told, they will know what to do because they know the truth. That is how he is going to save so many in the tribulation. Because having seen, we believe without seeing. He said, blessed are those that believe and have not seen. But these are going to, like the original apostles and those thousands of people that saw Jesus after the cross and believed and went through the terrible tribulations that Nero put forward, I've spoken to you about that, and through all the generations have held on, but those first ones had that, we saw it, we believe it, we know it to be true. After the rapture, there is going to be that group again. Even though back in the day of Jesus, there were those that did see and didn't believe, and so they went about being wicked continually. But those that saw and believed, trusted in him, went to their death, not denying him. Those that are left after they've seen the rapture and they know it's true, this is a rally call for all of them. Tell them when you see this one, if you didn't believe anything else, when you see this one, know it's true. And when you know it's true, have faith that everything else he said is true and he will sustain you and you will, if you do not deny him, you will be saved. Not necessarily by the body, remind them, it's not our body. They will go to heaven for eternity, eternity eternal salvation it's not temporary i'm going to stop someone putting a knife in you no it is eternal salvation so tell them this will happen but remember this verse because this is important for you this is the proof he had it planned and he told you he would do it now therefore O lord our god I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand because he's coming. He is taking over now. You can see he's taking over. The, the evil one is taking over. But our God will save us out of his hand. The reason that all the kingdoms of the earth, back when this was said, it was said in a tiny area, it wasn't all the kingdoms this is meant for us. All the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. He is coming and he has a reason for it to be. Anyone telling you it's not before the tribulation, 
tell them that one. And if they say, oh, that was only for that time, that time could never have been spoken of for the whole earth to know because that was only a regional conversation. But praise God, he knew the day that we would read that. He knew that we would sound the bell and tell everybody this is happening. There are Christians all around the world today speaking of the rapture, looking for the rapture and everybody around the world who doesn't believe is coming against them and calling them fools and saying there is no such thing. Even people claiming Christianity are saying it's not going to happen. They are going to see it. People that walked with Jesus and did not believe fully that he would re, um, resurrect, who did not believe when, when they put him on the cross, they, oh, that's the end of that, until they saw him rise. This is that situation. There are people that call themselves Christians that don't have that full faith until they see him rise us up. And he's going to do it for that very reason to save them. This is their second chance. We have a God of second chances and we must rejoice and be glad in it for he is coming, coming soon. And if anyone is left behind, remember this is that final proof and warning of what will come, but that it is true. This is not to be feared. This is not, and if someone you love is being left behind, it doesn't mean they're not saved. Tell them that it doesn't mean they're not saved. It means they weren't ready. They will, if they keep, the faith. Be saved because God promises it. The rapture is a sign for all the nations of the earth. Right? It is the sign for everyone in this earth to know it is real. But he is coming so so soon so get ready don't fall back in the world I know I know I've, I've even myself wanted to play the games on the computer you know that um, card game solitaire oh it can get you in if you if you let it and it, it's occasionally lately I've wanted to just go into anything and take my mind off what's happening because I see and you see all the terror that's going on, all the evil that's going on. Good Christians, young man just the other day was sacked from being a policeman because he he was acing it. He was the best they'd ever had. But the enemy saw he had posted on his private Facebook page a quote from the Bible about marriage and he was called over the coals and you've got to go mate you've got to go you're sacked unless you denounce this and he said no I'm going I'm not denouncing my God it's happening now we are in the time of sorrows and we are approaching that great and glorious moment when God shows the nations of the whole world that everywhere he has seeded Christians who believe in his coming so that when he takes every little group out and it may not be as many as you hope but it is those that prepared themselves when he takes those out, the others will see, those that were around them will see, it was true. There will still be the lie of alien abduction and those who never ever wanted to believe will still not. 
they are handed over to a depraved mind. Those with the depraved mind cannot be cleaned up unless they choose. So he hands them over to their own depravity. But those who were seeking, those who had that tiny spark of conscience, which is the Holy Spirit, it will then switch in and they will, oh, why didn't we listen? Some will be angry, some will be frightened, but some will just, we believe, and they will come through the storm. Whether they come through life or dead, they will come through with their souls. And we will be joined with the millions and millions of probably billions and billions. Since time immemorial, we will be gathered together with all of them. And we will be in eternity with our brothers and sisters that we've never met until that day. God be praised. Get yourself ready. Don't slack off. Pray for me too that I don't slack off, please. Sometimes I get tired. But pray for me that I pray earnestly that God will pull this from me, this desire to to go into oblivion and turning my mind off. Please, I need your help. I need your prayers too. I am a weak human being and I just ask you, please pray for me in these later days because my weakness is showing and I need I need God's help so desperately to keep on the journey. I don't want to slip off. I pray for you all. God love you all. If you see someone in, in the comment section that's asking for prayer, don't hesitate. Don't just roll over and I mean that for every person's channel every channel out there if you see somebody that is asking for prayer they are asking for you to help them connect God says where there is two or more I will be there put yourself in the position of being the other one for that person you may be the only one that joins in their prayer. Yes, God will hear an individual, but there is power and strength in prayer. That is why he tells us to come together. We may not be able to come together in the physical flesh, but we can come together in prayer because prayer is of the spirit and our spirits connect at that moment so please pray for everyone you see that asks for prayer in any person's comments and even for those that you see they are lost and they are speaking out of place pray that they get understanding even the couple that I've had to remove who were very blasphemous I will still pray that they Find the truth. I don't want anyone to go to hell if you had the slightest inclination of how horrible hell really is. And it's not like Catholics say, it's pur you get into purgatory and you work your way up out of there. No, it is a forever place. It is eternity. Now, eternity doesn't mean what you and I think. Eternity, just like time, is, a, is created by God. So if God says, oh, for us it could be a 100,000, a million years, whatever, we don't know how long eternity is. But when God says it's over, he said, I will cast that into. He is going to cast a place that is for eternity, he is going to cast that into the lake of fire and it will be gone. There is hell. 
hell and death will be cast into. Death is what you are in hell. That is death. Death isn't just... <coughs> death is <laughs> that. We're not destined for death. Our flesh dies, but our souls live with Christ. Living is the good bit. Death is the punishment. Death is the sentence. And it's not, don't exist. But one day he will take death and hell and cast it into the lake of fire and it will be gone forever. So don't be in that lot. Be in the life which is Jesus Christ. Come to the Father through Jesus the Son. Come to the Father through Jesus his Son and give God the glory, great things he has done. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear your voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Come to the Father through Jesus his Son and give God the glory, great things he has done. Praise him with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your strength and sing his praises and come with us to the best party in the universe, in creation. Come with us and be one with us that we may be one with the Father. Oh, isn't it exciting? And we are close. So, so close. So come on. Get yourself built up again. Strengthen yourself. Pray for one another. Oh, I even feel the tingles now. He is coming. He is coming. He is coming. I love you. I love you all. And I wish I could give you the biggest, cuddliest hug. My nephew said I was the best hugger. I like hugs. So I am going to imagine I am hugging you with the biggest, cuddliest hug you could imagine. And it's squishy. <laughs> love you all. Oh, God loves you much more than I could ever imagine love to be. And be encouraged. He is on his way. And he has a reason. Go and read it. Go and read. 2 Kings 19, 19. Well, even the number 19, 19. Therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech ye, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth shall know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Don't we trust in the Lord? God be praised. Don't get caught up in Solomon's sin of compromise with the world to get along get along to go along don't don't get into that if your churches are doing it mention it to them but they've got to make their choice but God will give them that warning when we go don't despair over the left behind yes it'll be hard but we go for the reason to bring them into truth, to let them know. Where that electric shock on the, you know, when someone's dying and they put that thing on and pulse them open again to, to life, we will be that pulse. Just warn them it's coming, okay? Warn them it's coming. God bless you. God love you. I love you. Have a beautiful day. Until we see again, either here or there, preference there, but I don't know the day or the hour yet. One day we will, and we'll be there in a twinkling of an eye. Oh, won't that be wonderful, my loves? God bless you all. May his face shine upon you. Imagine the face of God shining upon you, the peace that that will give you the understanding you will have the moment you see his face upon you. 
may he give you peace. Amen. Amen. God bless you.